true worship according to Jesus has nothing to do with earth or earth's dimensions true worship it's in the spirit God is a spirit and Jesus is saying believe this woman God is a spirit and therefore if you're going to worship him we have to enter the dimension in which he exists whoa just falling on your knees upon earth is not getting to God in worship are y'all here there has to be another dimension for true worship to occur and Jesus says if the father is going to be worshiped it must be in this dimension it must be in the spirit between the power of the Lord and the power of the spirit we can walk in perpetual victory we can have a victory after victory after victory through the power that is available to us in the Holy Ghost. Men spoil you through philosophy after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the natural world. See, it's all carnal. That, that word, word there in actual Greek is the word cosmos, which means the natural world system. They just philosophize from the natural world system. This breaks my heart so much, I'm just going to have to say it publicly. When, when, when the T.D. Jakes at Megafest came on stage with Oprah Winfrey, who is a new age guru, and he said, well, I invited her because she has insights as to, as to how to help us live better. In other words, she has philosophical views. God says, beware of that. That stuff will pull you right out of where I am. And it ties you into people, into man's philosophical views and concepts. And now listen, listen, look at all the philosophical concepts and views of men. The world is about to explode. We don't know anything. Paul says it's all vain deceit. But it's after men. The rudimentary concepts of the world system. And then he says, and they're not after Christ. I'm going to show you he's still awkward about worship, you see. Watch what he says. Look, if you will, please, at, at verse 20. Wherefore, if you be dead with Christ. Notice we're to be dead with Christ. Every Christian is to be crucified with, with Christ. If you be dead with Christ, from what? Read it. See, if you're dead with Christ, the philosophical worldviews that are all natural and earthly, I'm totally free from that garbage. Hallelujah! We are to exist on a whole nother realm, a whole nother level, a whole nother world. We are to enter the spirit. We are to be in the spirit. That's the realm where your creator exists. Nothing of the earth. Jesus says this is the only way to truly worship. Notice what he says now. If you then be dead with Christ, then you're dead from the rudiments of this present world. Why then as though you're living where? See, listen, you can't be in the spirit and in the world at the same time. You can't be in the spirit and in the flesh at the same time. 
Now, see, we're to be dead with Christ that we might live over in the Spirit. Amen. Now, he's saying, if you be dead with Christ, why as though you're living in the world? Follow. See, this will go past a lot of folks. But this is where Paul was. Because he lived in this realm. Notice. Why as though living in the world are you subject? Do you come under ordinances? Ordinances means teachings and concepts of men. Now notice the next phrase is in parenthesis, correct? What does that mean? That means that the next phrase is a parenthetical statement. Meaning it was interjected in the midst of a main statement. So let's take the parenthetical statement out for a moment to pick up with the main statement. Do you follow me? So notice he says, why are you subject to ordinances after the commandments and doctrines of who? If I'm not in the world, why even listen to carnal, fleshly human men? Men who think they know something about worship and serving God. Now, in the parenthesis, he says, these men teach touch not, taste not, handle not. See, See, this is worship. Worship means you don't do nothing on Sunday or Saturday because you got to, you know, worship on Saturday. Some faiths, like Muslims, say, well, you can't eat pork because that's worship now. See, that's worship. Jews have their own little things that they do. And they're all wrong relative to the fact that I'm dead. I'm dead with Christ. I'm dead with Christ. To the rudiments of this earth realm. The earth realm. If that's true, why would I be subject to all these concepts of men? After their teachings, after their doctrines. Now please notice. Look at what he says in verse 23. Which things... That men teach for worship, which things have indeed a show of wisdom in what? Well, God didn't call us to worship in will. See, you can fast for 40 days during Ramadan. That's strong will to go 40 days. And we call it worship. But it is not giving me over into the spirit where God exists. It's nothing before God. Which things show indeed a certain amount of wisdom in will worship and humility. Yes, they do. You go before a man and confess all your dirt. Boy, that's very humbling. This is how our worship is over here. Well, none of that means anything to God. Because God is not a man. He's not even in the earth realm. His whole existence is in the spirit. So if you're going to get anything to God, you've got to get over where God exists. Where does he exist? In the spirit. Now notice now. Which things show indeed uh, uh, an amount of wisdom and will worship? And humility, notice he says, and neglecting of the what? Yes, they do. Some people say if you're going to worship God, you can't even comb your hair. Notice, not in any honor and satisfying of the flesh. Well, isn't that nice? We call this worship. Hindus walk on their knees until they bleed. You know, Buddhists 
they kneel down in glass to show humility before God. And they call this their worship. Well, see, none of that matters to God because God is not in the flesh realm to begin with. Amen. Your Bible calls it will worship and your Bible calls it a certain de degree of human wisdom that originates from the mind of men. And Paul said, beware of all of that. But here's what he said we're to do, not worship God in will, but look at that next verse. If you then be what? Now he said if you be dead with Christ, that's to cut you off from the world. Now we're to be risen with Christ, that's to get us over into the spirit. Are y'all here? Yeah. Well, thank God I'm dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world. And thank God I've been risen with Christ to operate over in the Spirit. Woo -woo! Not enough to be dead with Him, also rise with Him. When you rise with Him, you rise over into the Spirit realm. That's another whole dimension of existence. Notice He says, If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God the Father. Now that's in heaven. It says, seek, seek the throne of God where Christ is on the right hand of God. Listen, if I couldn't have it, if I couldn't get there, the Bible is wrong for telling me to seek that. Amen. Come out of the earth. Come out of the earth realm. Come out of earthly, worldly, human ways of thinking. Even when it comes to worship, get over into the spirit. Seek the things that are above, he said. Well, you can make it to the very throne of God and worship him for real. You ain't got to do all this human stuff, this human nonsense. Well, you can really worship God for real. Jesus says the hour is coming, now he is, where you can get over into the spirit. Woo! Woo! Notice he says, set your affections on, on, what? And not things on what? Yeah. See, get, learn to get over in another dimension now. When you get over in that dimension, earth things don't mean nothing one way or the other. If you want to worship on Sunday and I on Saturday, who cares? If you want to kneel down in glass and I don't, who cares? All of that is nothing. Once you get over into the spirit, once you get over in that new dimension, oh my God, all of heaven opens up to you and the world becomes nothing. Are y'all still with me? Yeah. Look at verse 16. See, once, now he's talking about worshiping God in the spirit, not just in your human will. Verse 16, then he says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Now that is, see, once you get over there where, where Christ is, once you worship truly the Lord in glory, once you get over into that realm, you're going to get downloads of wisdom and information. Notice he says, let the word of Christ, not of God, dwell in you richly. In how much wisdom? In all wisdom teaching. Now I know, see, man just have partial earthly wisdom. All wisdom comes from heaven. Hang on to this and notice chapter 2 in verse 3. Read it please. One, two, three, read. In Christ are hidden all the treasures of what? So all wisdom is in who? All wisdom is in who? So notice he says, once we get over in that realm, we can teach from all wisdom that is from crisis man, not just human earthly stuff. See, it's a dimension that every believer should attain to and live in. It's called worshiping God in the spirit. That's how you get over there in that dimension. That's how you push through that veil from earth to heaven. You worship in the spirit. And that takes you over into another dimension. 
Uh, I don't know if I'm talking to anybody. Notice he says, let's go back now. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. In all wisdom, that comes from heaven, not earth. In all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another. Then he shifts to singing, notice, in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Well, where do you get a song of the Spirit from? From spiritual worship. See, once you penetrate that veil, once you come out of your flesh and begin to worship God in the Spirit, you begin to pick up spiritual songs. Listen, I've talked to a few people uh, who say they've gone over into heaven Literally, they got through the veil, and they did what, what your Bible says. They sought for the things above. They got to the throne of God, and they heard songs in heaven that eventually they hear sung on earth. To get that song from heaven to earth, somebody had to penetrate the spirit realm. They had to come out of their flesh. Your Bible says sing spiritual songs or songs that come from the spirit realm or spirit world. See, this is true spiritual worship. See, Paul took time to shot down, to shoot down the kind of worship we do in the natural that's of the flesh. Now, notice what that says. Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing and what? Read it. Now, notice grace, singing with grace in your heart. Now, grace, it is a supernatural thing. We know the grace of God is not natural. Grace literally means supernatural enablement. The word grace literally means supernatural enablement. Now, notice singing by a supernatural enablement from the heart to who? See, that's the only kind of worship he accepts. I don't know how to say this any better. That's the only kind of worship he accepts. Worship that penetrates into the spirit realm. Whoa! And it's a thing of the heart, not the thing of the head. Now, Jesus says the hour is coming and now is. See, since Jesus, we're able to cross over into this. Because by his death, we died to the rudiments of this world. And by his resurrection, we're able to go over into that spiritual dimension. Yeah. Jesus says, because I'm here, the hour is now. Yeah. Now people can really worship God for real. He called it in truth. You can literally go to the portals of heaven and get before God for real in the spiritual dimension. Yeah. Uh, is this making any sense? Yeah. Now I say, now some of this is just going to go over people's heads. But I still got to talk about it because it's in your Bible. And we may as well talk about something that's real. And not just philosophical views of men that satisfy carnal folks in the pews. Let's bring Oprah to talk about what? How to live a better life.